John out here with you with another video review, this time of a multi-platform variety. It's The Outer Worlds on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The Nintendo Switch version is currently in development and is set to ship out probably later in 2020, although we don't have a date as far as now. So I want to talk about this game from Obsidian and Pirate Division. And I want to talk about some of my uh, hesitancy in the beginning. We're going to talk a little bit about the game as well in this 12 minute review. And uh, some of my final thoughts and things on it. So without going in, without knowing anything, without even talking about the story or what type of game this is. It's made by Obsidian. Now, makers of Fallout New Vegas, along with Bethesda, Fallout New Vegas had tons of bugs. But Obsidian was able to do what they could do, you know, with all Bethesda's rushing and everything else to get it out there. And a lot of people thought that Fallout New Vegas was one of the better ones in that development cycle. Now Obsidian goes out, makes their own studio, you get the Outer Worlds. So if you loved Fallout New Vegas, if you loved Fallout 3, if you loved uh, Knights of the Old Republic, Mass Effect, games to that accord, you will love Outer Worlds. However... You may be wondering, is this game tied to any development processes of Bethesda? Is it tied to Fallout 4, Fallout 76, any of those kinds of things? It may be the same game type, but no, it does not carry any of those bugs. It does not carry a $100 price tag a year just to be able to play online to have all of your stuff stripped away through the scrap box and have places and private servers that are looted already. No. Pirate Division should be commended in this type of day and age, in 2019, that they have made a game, they have made a game of high quality, and they have not allowed any, you know, malcontent DLC or anything else to flood into it. The game is just made very well, and in 2019, it's a game. It comes out on your console, it's a game itself, it begs to be played, and that's all that it is. It's a damn good game in its own right. And without any hindrances, and I have never even encountered a bug throughout my entire playthrough, it's just a beautifully made game, and a very well made game at that. So, Pirate Division, I want to talk about that as well. I did not know going into that, they are a subsidiary of 2K Properties, meaning, if you heard about it within the last couple months of NBA 2K20 and WWE 2K20, some of the worst games on the planet, you know, marred by bugs, gambling instances, and just downright pissing off the community. So hopefully if Obsidian, you know, goes to make a sequel to The Outer Worlds, which I'm hoping will happen after my playthrough and all that stuff, I hope that Pirate Division does not have any say in it as far as 2K and some of that stuff. And you got to keep 2K and 2K Sports separate and, uh, Strauss away from all that stuff from 2K because this game is good. So, with all that stuff on the side, no worries. Outer Worlds is the RPG that you've come to expect. So, again, if you're familiar with, you know, Mass Effect, Fallout New Vegas, Knights of the Old Republic, you're going to be at peace here. Now, what I think sets it apart, not only just not having any graphical bugs and things like that, the guys at Obsidian have done a wonderful job as far as making the world believable. The writing in this game is downright hilarious at times. And it just, it makes it play beautifully when you want to play the way you want to play. In games like this, you can decide if you want to go in, you know, with just melee weapons, with just guns, if you want to sneak around, if you want to hack, if you want to lockpick things, if you want your teammates to do most of the damage, you can play this game any damn way that you want to, and it makes it fun. The experience, no matter what you choose, no matter how you decide to play it, will be tailored to you, and you can make it work. You can come up with some truly wild play styles, and yet again, you will find yourself at peace with this game. So let me talk about the story a little bit without spoiling too much. So you're a frozen colonist from the hope that's revived by Dr. Phineas Wells. Wells wants to unfreeze the rest of the colonists, but he needs your help to save those people from the hope in Terra 2. Now, you can decide to do that. You can also decide as you go throughout your playthrough that you're going to side with the board and figure out the rest of the problems that you have going on in the world. 
Will you side with the mad scientists to try to save your own people? Will you side with the board? Or will you just decide to do your own thing? Or will you, you know, fuck up completely with one of the uh, secret endings that are in the game without spoiling too much? This is your oyster to explore however you want. Now, in this second segment of gameplay that you see right here, I lie, cheat, and steal all my way to the top. And I loved playing that way. No, when I played through this game, I did not have strength, dexterity, and temperament. Meaning, I couldn't dodge all that well. I couldn't carry as much stuff. You know, if I used a melee weapon, I couldn't hurt a fly. Or I didn't even have passive health regeneration throughout my playthrough. You might say, John, that all sounds like a nightmare. But again, I say... Play how you want to play. You can make this game work to your advantage, and I did. I try to think. Of, I try to think about it. You know, within 15 minutes before starting the game, you know, staring at the stat screen more than creating my own character, figuring out how I wanted to decide to play. I wanted to master the dialogue tree. So what did I do? I ma I maxed out. You know, persuade, lie, uh, <laughs> any of that stuff that I could. Intimidate. I made it so I can make anyone I want do whatever I want and even through some of those encounters even though it was fun to use assault rifles be a crack shot with a sniper assault rifle and a, a heavy weapon no I couldn't use any melee weapons but the fighting still felt good using any guns but I could slow down time just like you can you can kinda of change some of those things there but I could make any person do whatever I wanted them to do and because the writing was so damn good at times I laughed out loud as just uh, masses of enemies just bend to my every will that was one of the ways I like to play this game and I thought it was super enjoyable in that vein so gameplay wise you're gonna go around and traverse the open world and you're gonna help other other uh, NPCs around their way and yes yeah, some of the stuff is fetch quests I hear from time to time but you're going to go ahead as you go throughout this, you're going to figure out what the uh, ideas are of the board, the ideas are of Dr. Wells, and you're going to make it as you wish. But here, the combat here, I think was very enjoyable. You can switch between four weapons at any time. Again, I had long guns, so it was assault rifles, sniper rifles, and somehow they acquired a shotgun as a long gun, so I was able to use those. You can get a workbench. Yes, your weapons do degrade over time, and yes, my weapon setup, I did have a expanded durability loss so that wasn't as fun from time to time but it's not game breaking the durability only has to do with the main character but if you press you know left or right on the d-pad you can activate your companion abilities you can tell your companions to go forward or stay back if you go into the menu with the touchpad or the select button on the Xbox One you can go in there and tell them to attack from close range from far away you can have any characters that you have in your party and be able to equip any weapons but the one aside that's the most important thing is you can obviously play with uh, some of your favorite companions or you can be a lone wolf if you want though I don't recommend it there are again perks that you can use to make that work for you if you choose to but what you can do is you can see like Pravati here or uh, Vicar Max you can see that you know Pravati is really good at using lockpicks or getting persuade, or Vicar Max is really good at int intimidating, hacking things in there. So their supplemental skills adds bonus to your skills. So once you get to the levels and things that you want, you are able to tailor the experience how you want to and just play the way that you want to. If you don't like what you have, just go into the unreliable ship that you get and start over. You can go right into there and reset your skills, respec if you will, and get that stuff done. So the one thing I will say, as far as the gameplay and everything else, this is one of the shorter open world RPGs if it is if you're going through main storyline I would expect you to finish it probably within 25 to 30 hours is doing main storyline it's not that long and even some of the uh, side missions not all of them you know turn out to be very useful it's just leveling up in that sense and yeah they're good as far as funny and bringing some depth in the game and learning some of these things but they're not entirely necessary at all I found and that's one of those things that I would say you know I kind of scratched my head because a lot of that stuff is tied to side missions but no you can go from 
main storyline and have a complete fun time doing that. So if you don't want to get, you know, boggled down with all that, you can still get, you know, a damn fine experience just going all the way through. The one thing I would say, and I didn't know this going in, but the Outer Worlds is not built in with the love interest in mind. Yes, there are some love interests for uh, some of your side companions if you choose to pursue that, but not with the main character. And a lot of games like this, you usually do see a love interest. I do not see that as a deal breaker because, again, the story was pretty damn well written. The commentary was, you know, fun from your teammates from side to side. They are, you know, not just husks. They will help you with the combat, and they will be quite serviceable. And the game is very good as a whole. So, whether you're going around, going from place to place, trying to get some other side missions done, or you're just traversing the locations, the load times at times can be a little bit of a detriment. We'll see how that goes as far as the next-gen consoles, because I'm sure these ones are pretty tapped out. But all in all, all in told, Outer Worlds is probably one of my favorite games of 2019. And that says a lot, and considering one of the big releases is on the line tomorrow here for a PS4 exclusive in Death Stranding, I hold Outer Worlds in high regard, and I would give that, at worst, a 9 out of 10. I think it's one of my favorite games of 2019. Everything is just so well polished, and it's a lot of fun to play. But it is on the shorter side. But if that's okay with you, you're able to get all of the uh, experiences that you want. You know, not tied into DLC, not tied into anything else. What you see is what you get. And the Outer Worlds is a damn fine open world RPG that shouldn't be missed. I hope Obsidian can make a sequel real soon. Because I'm sure we're all going to be looking forward to it. This is John Ott signing off. Have a good one.